saved me, cleansed me, turned my life around, set my feet.
exalt your mighty name, God. You're an awesome God. We reverence you. We give you all the praise. All the glory belongs to you, Lord Jesus. We give you all that we have. Everything inside of us, Lord. Let's go ahead and pray. Amen. We're going to ask you to pray along with us. Amen. We're going to uh, pray for our pastor, Greg and Lisa Mitchell. That's our grandmother church in Prescott, Arizona. We just came back from a conference. We see churches all over the world. And I want you and I to pray together so that, amen, God can help them and give them direction for their lives. Amen. And uh, get uh, them into the right place. Get them to find the right people. Amen. We launched out 26 churches and all over the world. I want to pray for every individual pastor and their wife. We're going to pray also for um, what God is doing in Cape Cod. That's our Northeast Bible Conference. We're going to pray for Pastor Paul and Linda Campbell, Chip and Lori Guineer. And I'd like you to also remember to pray for the Suspanskis, the Kings, and the Spicers in Jacksonville. And let's also pray for Toronto. Let's pray that God does a work up there. Gene LaValle is pastoring there. They just sent out two churches right into the local area of Toronto. So they're going to need help and pray for God to move by the Holy Spirit and to help them to become fruitful. I'd like to also pray for what God is doing here locally in the town of Greece. Amen. We prayed with a young man by the name of Noah. Uh, that was last month. We're going to pray for the Spirit of God to help him. I prayed with two people on outreach. I went down to Walmart and I prayed with a fellow in the parking lot over here for salvation. Let's pray for their lives to change. Uh, the peace of Jerusalem. I'd like to pray for uh, a to the families there, those that are missing loved ones because of uh, the war that's going on there. Let's pray for the Gaza Strip. Let's pray for those families that were abducted to be returned to their families and their husbands and wives and spouses and their children. Amen. Let's pray for police officers, firefighters, and uh, those active military and those who are retired. We're lifting up to our Shelton. Amen. For salvation. Amen. And we're going to pray for Madeline who came to church last Sunday night. We're going to pray for direction for her and uh, miracles into her family. Perhaps there's a need in your life that I did not mention. I'm going to ask you to lift up your hand right now. Amen. God sees your hands. You have a need. Amen. Nobody can fix it. No amount of money can fix it. No uh, uh, kind of counseling can fix that. You need a miracle. You need God supernaturally to break from heaven into this world and to touch you personally in your life. We're going to pray for you. Thank you for lifting your hands. You can put those down. We're going to go ahead and pray. Let's all stand up in here. Let's take a, uh, an app, app here and, and a position uh, of uh, honoring God by standing up here and praying and asking God for miracles. Let's all stand here and worship God. God, you're an awesome God. We trust you, God. We're believing you, God, Jesus, to help our families. Right I pray for every unspoken request, God. Move miraculously, Lord God. We need your miraculous working power, God. And we lose supernatural miracles and wonders, God. Salvation to be wrought. Save our families. Save our friends. Uh, save those in our communities, Lord God, with miracles, Lord God. Save our fathers and save our mothers. Move powerfully upon our kids and our children that are not saved, that are backslidden. Move powerfully, God. Increase finances, God. God, bring anointing and power, God. Help the band on Saturday, Lord God, to be effective, Lord God, to win souls uh, and to pray for the lost, Lord God. We come to you this evening by the blood of Jesus. And in the name of the only begotten of the Father, Jesus, uh, by which no other name is given among men, whereby we must be saved, but by the name of Jesus. We're calling on your power, God, your advocacy, and you're helping us God, from the throne of your grace, God. Pour out wonders, God. Give miracles to spouses, God. Move powerfully upon uh, uh, families, Lord God. I pray for a miracle breakthrough tonight. Lord God, we're asking it supernaturally. We're not going to rely on our religious, pathetic religious mindset, God, but that you can touch us, God, as we devote ourselves to you, as we surrender who we are to you. Touch our leaders, help our pastors, our fellowship, those who have been launched out into the harvest field, God. Give them favor, God. Establish them in their cities, God. We're so grateful that you're here with us tonight. And we're calling on Jesus.
name, God, help us to be open for this message, this sermon, God, anointed, God, as I hide behind this pulpit, as I hide behind the cross, Lord Jesus, you have your way, be exalted and give us breakthrough, God, we're asking in Jesus' name, amen. Let's go ahead and praise God. wonder to be here with you. Thank you for coming, and I'm going to ask you to take a moment to greet one another, make everybody feel welcome tonight.
the world evangelism, you can uh, make a donation if you want to, uh, you don't have the money with you now, you can give it at a different time. That's possible, but, um, and this might not be your church, but you can tithe, you can give uh, to the work and watch what God can do. I mean, I got a scripture here called 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. And Paul writes to the Corinthians about money. He says, for if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. So the preacher is not forcing you to give money. Amen. Of course, it would be good to do it out of a willingness, that something that you plan to give to the work. And God is not asking to have you give something that you don't have. Amen. But from what you do have, the Bible says that God is rich in blessing us. He's given us jobs. He's provided for us. Amen. With a check or a gift or something, God is blessing your life. Amen. And the Bible says that if you have a willing mind, if you're willing to give and invest in uh, souls and invest in your very own soul also, it's going to nurture you. It's going to help you. It's going to be a blessing in your life. So let's go ahead and bow our heads. And I'm going to ask the usher to come forward. And take the offering and pass it. If you can give, God loves a cheerful giver. He's going to bless your life. He's going to take care of you. Many people are afraid. Well, if I give, I'm not going to have enough for me. And I'm not going to have enough for my family. You know, God is a supernatural God. He said, if you'll honor me, he said, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. That's an amazing promise that God gives to you and I. You will never go hungry. You will never be without. The Bible says you will be blessed. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, you're an awesome God. We thank you for this time. Help us to give out of cheerful hearts, out of a willingness. Lord God, we're grateful for our jobs and our health and salvation and all the wonderful things you've accomplished in our lives. Help us and bless this congregation to uh, overflowing willingness to serve you and to give to the work. We ask you to bless the work in Jesus' name. And all God's people said... Amen. Amen. And you can click the link online if you want to get to the work. kids. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for your offering, your giving. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Amos. That is one of the minor prophets in the middle of your Bible. Amos 9, verse 13. We're going to study here tonight. The great French wine blight caused by an aphid. I imagine that aphid is a little bug. He called uh, a major controversy in the mid-19th century to destroy many of the vineyards in France and other European countries. The aphid first appeared in southern France in 1863 and by 1890 it had destroyed 40% of the French vineyards. The blight caused panic in France with thousands of uh, vintners fleeing the country and wine production decreasing by half. The crisis was a major income shock for the inhabitants of the wine growing regions where wine made up about one sixth of the agricultural income. Some desperate measures taken by grape growers included burying live toads under each vine to draw out the poison. Did everybody hear me? Yes. They buried toads underneath the plants. Eventually, two major solutions emerged. Grafting cuttings into a resistant rootstocks and hybridization. That's a big word for me to say. 
I want to talk to you about a crop failure in your life, perhaps. Maybe there have been a, a little bug, maybe not an aphid, but it could start with a root of bitterness. It could start with uh, being drawn into uh, temptation. You're going to get off of God's plan for your life, off of the path. Maybe it's a little virus. Some of you are familiar with uh, viruses on your computer. And you know what a hassle it is when you're trying to work on your computer and it's going slow. It's being bogged down. There's a virus in your computer and hopefully your computer doesn't completely shut down. If there is some kind of crop failure in your life and you're expecting one thing but you got another, you've been robbed of that fruit. If you've been robbed of that joy that God has promised for your life, Amen. I'm here to tell you tonight that God says, I am going to uh, restore the years that the locusts have eaten. Maybe you've been wandering. You have been investing in things that are not of God. Amen. You've been looking to things that don't bring you the fruit, don't bring you the joy that you, you, you thought that God had planned for you. But here we're going to look at a promise from God, a supernatural and undeserved and unexpected blessing God is planning to flow into your life. How many would like a blessing tonight? Yes. How many would like God to supernaturally increase your life? Amen. Amen. God sees your hands going up all over the place. Let's read our promise from Scripture, Amos 9, verse 13. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows seed. The mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and the hills shall flow with it. Amen. I'd like to preach this sermon, Supernatural Increase. So let's look firstly at having faith for the future. Amen. The plan and the process always has to do with first planting the seed and then you water it and you watch it grow. There's a certain order of things. And here, God is telling us we need to have faith for our future. Amos 9.13, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. Our God is a God of miracles. We need to let our faith arise and quit trusting in our own schemes. Quit trusting in your intellect. You've got everything figured out. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to, this is going to happen. And uh, amen. The Bible says that we need to trust in Jesus. Don't rely upon your own processing skills, your own intelligence. But rely upon Jesus. Why? Because Amen. He's going to do something in the very near future for you. We didn't let God have his rightful place and trust him with our future. Some of you so many times have tried to fix the problems on your own. God has planned to fix them for you. And, and it blows my mind to think about it, but you and I, we do not deserve God's grace. We do not deserve His mercy. And this is something that's going to happen to you. It's going to be unexpected. It's going to be a surprise for many of you. If you don't understand that our faith is for the future. It's something that's going to happen soon. All that you see right now, all that you're experiencing is not all that there is. You missed a good place to say amen. amen. Because God is planning to take you from point A to point B. You know, God has a plan. He's taking you down a path. And you and I don't realize what He has planned for us. He's not going to try to trick you. He's not going to mislead you and set a snare and deceive you and cause you to be ripped off. He's bringing you into a future. He's got great plans for us. We need to have a shift in our thinking so that we can lock in to what he's doing, what he wants for our lives. We need to have a confidence in him. Trust him. Because why? He, he's the Alpha and the Omega. 
He is the faithful one. He's the rock of our salvation. And he was in the beginning. He created all things. All things were made through him. Nothing was made without him, the Bible teaches in John. And so he is the alpha. He's the beginning. He is the end also. He's seen your life. He saw you when you were a little bitty baby inside your mother's womb. He said, I have a plan for your life. And I want to help you to get from there to hear God's plan is blessing in your life. He is a faithful one throughout time and eternity. His promises are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. God is going to reveal that to you today, I'm praying. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's existed from the very beginning. He will continue to exist forever. He was before the beginning and he'll exist after the end. Revelation 22, 13. He's talking to John the Revelator. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. We need to think about our future Amen. What's going to get you to your future is faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. We need faith. We need to believe. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Faith is the substance of things that are hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. I mean, think about the Lord's Prayer. Jesus had some disciples and they said, Jesus, you know, we know John, John's disciples, you know, he taught them how to pray. Will you teach us how to pray? And so Jesus said, uh, do not be like the uh, heathen, for your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask them. The heathen people are the kind of people, maybe some Catholics, they have a rosary bead. And they pray the same prayer over and over and over again. God says, this is not the way to pray. He said, pray like this. He said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And so I want to focus on that. That God wants you and I to focus on just simply trusting God. He's going to give us our daily bread. He's going to help you if you don't have a job tonight. He wants to give you a job if you've got sucky hours and you don't have any time for church. He's going to shift your job. He can get rid of that lousy job. I'm telling you, he can shift things. He can change things for you. And many times we think, oh, this is the best I can do. Well, I want you to know that God has a plan for your life to increase your finances, to help you to be blessed. Amen. Maybe you're sick in your body. He can heal your body completely from uh, any disease. We had a woman come once. She said, I'm going blind. Can you pray for me, Pastor Paul? I said, I'm not Jesus, and I'm not a doctor, but I will pray for you. We prayed for her. That Friday, she said, you're not going to believe this. She sent me a little text. She said, the doctor says, I don't need eye surgery. That wasn't me, amen, but that God gave her a miracle. Why? Because of her faith, she put her trust in Jesus. She came from uh, an outreach for in her neighborhood. She brought her husband, and she brought her heart, and she believed God, and she got her own miracle. We've had many miracles like that. We've had many job shifts. Um, Judy to told us that uh, you know she was praying and praying, and God gave her a new set of hours so she could make church on Sundays. That's glorious. We had another woman come to church, and she said... Uh, you know, my husband has, has left me. He's left the kids. We're all alone. And, uh, and I need a miracle. I need you to move, God. And so we fasted and prayed for her. And with her faith, amen, God brought her husband back. And we believe God for miracles. Faith brings you into your future and provides God with the ability to do things that are impossible. I want you to think about the impossible, the most difficult things that you need in your life. And if you and I will simply trust Jesus and believe Him, He's going to provide you for more than enough. 
Amen. An abundance of miracles. An abundance of money. How many need a little bit more money? Yes. How many need, okay, I see the hands going up. How many need some better hours on your job? Yeah. Praise God. How many need to get a job? Okay, we got some people who need a job. Amen. God is going to give you a job. Amen. And it begins here as you are absorbing this information. And God is going to turn that into revelation when you let it sink in and you believe he's going to provide you. Amen. That job that you're looking for, the increase in finances. Amen. This is not for our own glory. Not for our own prosperity. God's going to give you a new job. He's going to give you a, a better job. He's going to give you more finances. And that is so that his kingdom can be promoted. Yeah. Your testimony is going to be like, man, I just prayed. And God said, you know what? I'm going to do something for you. And it's going to come quickly. And you believe that. Amen. He's going to be glorified because he is going to... Be revealing himself to you, giving you a miracle, and then you can share that with other people so they will also believe. You're going to have enough money to invest in world evangelism. Amen. Some of you, you have just enough to scrape by. That's not the will of God for your life. Scraping by, just barely making it. Oh, it's a long, it's a tough life. It's a long road, this Christianity. That's really not what we believe. We believe that God wants to give you more and more than enough. So you don't have to struggle like that. And now what is the doctrine of prosperity? There's a branch of Christianity. It is kind of like... You want to let me in the back? I already told you. Okay, yeah, just put it back there. Uh, a branch of Christianity that promises a direct path to the good life. It is called by many different names, most nicknamed the prosperity gospel for it is a, a bold claim that God will give you your heart's desire, money in the bank, a healthy body, a thriving family, and boundless happiness. They call it the blab it and grab it doctrine. It's also called, a, it's called the positive confession. Now, if you just believe, and it removes a lot of the reality of living for God. There's a mega pastor who's also a talent evangelist named Todd Coons, who told one of his congregation, he said uh, to some people there, he said, invest a seed which can run you $273 or $333, which if you plant it, it will return to you multiplied. Farndad had a struggle, uh, con his business in construction was struggling, and uh, so he uh, during this time, his daughter also was experiencing health issues, and so was he. So he sent in two checks to this mega evangelist here, and his ev eventually con contributions would add up to about two thousand dollars in the end. Excuse me, no, twenty thousand. And he initially viewed seemingly small acts such as his wife receiving extra work hours. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that at all. In 2015, his daughter went to critical condition. They were homeless. They caught uh, 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 John Oliver special on televangelists that made them realize that they were being used. They wasted a lot of money. They put a seed in. And, you know, a lot of people, they, they preach that, you know, if you'll give this much, God will give this much. I'm not talking about an amount. I'm talking about your heart. You have to have faith in the living God. That God will provide for you. Some of these people, these televangelists, have gold toilets in their houses. Have you heard this? No. They have giant mansions, million dollar mansions, jets. And they have all kinds of uh, money that they don't know what to do with. Extravagant lifestyles. Think with me for a moment about the Catholic Church. Many years the Catholic Church would try to sell indulgences. This is... Uh, a way they promise that if you have a loved one is in he not in hell, but they're in purgatory. Okay. It's not heaven, it's not hell, it's in the middle place, right? Yeah. That if you pay a certain amount of money, that we're going to pray for you. And the second that the coin hits the bottom of the bucket, your loved one is going to be free from purgatory. Wow. Wouldn't that be great if you could do that? Mm -hmm. That's not what the Bible teaches. 
So they, uh, they procured a lot of money from a lot of people. They built incredible cathedrals. You've seen many of them. But this is not, amen, the way God gets money, and this is not what I'm talking about. The church also sold offices and leadership positions. They sold it for money. That's completely wrong. And I want to look secondly at getting there, amen. And that is not just by natural results. Some of you like to do the kind of thing where you get a credit card in the mail and you pay Peter, uh, you know, you're robbed from Paul, and you have different kind of ideas where you shift money around. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about natural results. I'm talking about something that is out of order, something that is not a natural process in your life. Amos 9, 13, he says, The days are coming. Behold, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows. So firstly, let's look at the plowman. This is the guy who's supposed to uh, run the blade through the, the soil. Maybe the ground is really hard and it needs to be turned over. And so many times they'll take the horses and they'll run the, the blades and uh, the, the, the knives through the ground to turn the soil over. And that's what happens first. And then comes the, 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 the guy with the seeds. He's got a bag of seeds and they're putting the seeds uh, into the ground. And uh, this is the order, the natural order. Many of you are not really raised on the farm, I guess. But this is for an agricultural society, the process or the order for getting a harvest out of the ground. You first have to uh, till the soil. You have to turn it over if it's hardened and no seeds will penetrate. Then secondly comes the seed, seed sower. Now I want you to think with me about this. The plowman is responsible for turning over the soil so that the seeds can be planted. And the plowman's job is arduous and always comes where? Comes at the beginning. But God is prophesying to you in your life right now, I'm going to do something different now. I am going to do something supernatural that you can't even think about. First, one man wrote, when God releases blessing and restoration, fruit comes abundantly. Normally, the plowman and the reaper, they're working apart. Their efforts separated by many months. But when these unique seasons of blessing and revelation, those normally separated seasons, they bump into each other. The crops were so big that the plowman and the reaper didn't have time to let the other finish the work. And we should pray tonight for such reasons, or seasons, excuse me, a season of fruitfulness in your life, where it's going to be out of order. And the plowman, who's at the end of it, is going to be working so feverishly, he's going to catch up to the sower. God wants to emphasize here that we can't figure everything out. And we don't have to. Because you know what? God is very smart. He's going to take care of you and I. He's got everything figured out. There's a natural order of things, a certain order of processes that occur in a certain order. But when God shows up, amen, the God of miracles, we sang that new song today. He's a God of miracles. And when he comes, he's going to quicken things. He's going to change the natural order of things like Amos is teaching the children of Israel. So first, let's look at the natural order of sin. Sin eventually brings a, a payment. Uh, there's consequences for your sin. Uh, you, uh, maybe you have a, a baby out of wedlock. Or maybe you've been gambling. So the consequence of, of those two things is, well, you're going to get pregnant. You're going to have a baby without a daddy. Or maybe you're gambling. You're going to be losing all your money. There's a consequence. There's an order to things. If you want to play a baby, you're going to pay. This is unexpected, amen. What God says, I'm going to do things that are unexpected and out of the natural realm. So for sin, we deserve to be punished. Can anybody say amen? Amen. We deserve hell. That's really what we deserve. But God says, I'm going to do something special for you. And I want you to be born again. I want to forgive you of your sins, regardless of you being a good person. But by faith, the Bible says that we can appropriate or take to ourselves God's grace, that's undeserved favor, 
that's a different order of things. We naturally deserve to, you know, feel it, feel the, the punishment of our sin. But God says, no, I don't want that to happen. If you believe in me, if you'll understand that the blood that I shed is enough to forgive you of your sins, then I will obliterate them. I'm going to wash your sins away completely. This is something that we really can't understand. It's unexpected. It's out of the natural order. The natural order of living life without God is emptiness. How many years do you remember wasting? Maybe not as a kid. You have no idea what sin really does as a kid. But you begin to get, become a teenager. And then you begin to be kicked out of your parents' house. And you go try to get a job. And, and life gets really rough. And there's a time of emptiness. Maybe you're living in sin. You're trying relationships. And nothing is working. And then the Bible says that uh, failure and depression are the results of living without God. But God says through Jesus Christ, we can have grace. We can get things that we really don't deserve. And that is blessing. God wants to turn your life around. This is something that is supernatural. Grace is unmerited favor. It's truly unexplainable. It doesn't make sense why God would do that for you and I. This is what I'm talking about. God wants to do something supernatural in your life. And Joel here, in our scripture, uh, or Amos, excuse me, he's revealing God's plan of a quickening. A quickening or a supernatural event that's going to take place. It goes beyond common sense. It goes beyond the natural order of things. And into the realm of the mysterious. This is something that's unexplainable. And certainly, you and I don't deserve God's blessing in our life. Just because of our good works. And then the Bible says it is by faith that we are saved. Amen. It is the gift of God. It's undeserved. Amen. And it's not by your works of righteousness, that's for sure. But it's by His blood alone. Something unusual, something that we don't deserve. Listen to me, the treader of grapes shall overtake the sower of seeds. So I put this picture up, and that looks kind of gross to some of you, but this is how they make grape juice in many countries. They'll put it in a vat, and they'll begin to squash it and step on it, and the juices start to... There's a process that begins, uh, even in the wine <coughs> process, where uh, something is released as they're squishing all those grapes. Grape treading. It's also known as pigeon or grape stomping. It is an ancient juice making technique that involves crushing grapes by foot in large vats. Look at those hairy legs. Some of you don't want to drink that. That's what I was thinking. Obviously, the sower of seeds would happen after the ground was turned over and the plowman had finished his job. The way that the treader of grapes were being employed, that would be at the end of the process. Can you say amen? Amen. But he's saying here that I'm going to turn things around. I'm going to flip them on their side. And not only am I going to have the uh, the plowman to catch up to those that are planting and those that are uh, plucking the grapes up and those that are uh, you know that are squishing the grapes, you could say the treader of grapes. Not just to catch up, but I'm going to overtake that. Mm -hmm. God's looking to overtake, and He's chasing after you tonight. And he's, you're trying to run from Him, and you're doing your own thing, and He's trying to catch up to you. And not only catch up to you, He's going to run past you. He's going to overtake you, and it's like He wants to tackle you. Some of you love football. He's going to tackle you, amen. This refers to something that is almost unexplainable. It is beyond reason. Something that is happening is going to blow your mind. Many people will be surprised. Many people have no idea what God is about to accomplish. We have these two young men here. Their dad's coming back to their house. That's incredible. You have no idea what God is going to do, man. There's so much potential in this. That God is going to save your dad. He's going to... Like, lock him in to your home. He's going to provide for you. He's going to bless you. And God is going to work miracles, amen, and overtake you and bless you. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. 
God's got beautiful plans for your life. I'm looking forward to meeting you. But some people will be surprised. They'll be like, God can't do it. I've tried before. I've believed and then God has always let me down. Well, here the Bible says something different for your life. Something that God is planning to grab hold of you and overtake you. This is a revival. This is going to be, God's going to breathe into that thing that is dead in your mind. And he's going to release blessing into you. That's just going to be uh, something you've never imagined. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Now to him who was able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. According to the power that works in us. You know what that means? Can you get your water or something, please? It means that there's power that God has, He's dying to release in your life. Amen. It's not, He would love to do it, but many times we are keeping Him back. Thank you, son. We're keeping Him back. But He wants to do something that is exceedingly, abundantly, of way beyond what you're thinking right now. Something that is just out of this world, man. It's going to trip you up. It's going to make you really happy. You might even dance across the stage for us. I don't know <laughs> what's going to happen. Okay. To Him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ. To all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is something that is supernatural. We're going to pray tonight. I want you to start thinking right now. At this part of the sermon. Something that you want God to do in your life. I'm not going to give you any examples. I'm not going to give you any suggestions. Think with me for the next 10 minutes about something that you want God to do in your life. And firstly, it's going to be undeserved favor. You can never be good enough. You can never give enough money to the church. You can never preach and outreach. You can never sacrifice, you know, a million times. This is going to be something that God's just going to do for you if you believe. Nothing to do with your works. Secondly, we're going to break some demonic strongholds tonight. Amen. There are things in your life that are keeping you back from fulfilling His plan personally. Maybe it's poverty. Maybe you get money and then it just leaks out of your pockets. It's like a, a bag that you've got and somebody caught holes in it. It's always going. You, you never have enough money. God's going to break poverty tonight for you. Immorality. You have... Uh, some kind of thing going on that there's certain people in your life perhaps whether male or female and they have a way of tempting you you follow yourself you find yourself falling into uh, certain traps and certain emotions and you have a, this thing this is a stronghold in your life and it's an immoral stronghold God's going to break it tonight for you and lastly I'm going to pray for people who have uh, a spirit of rejection that means earlier in your life either your friends or your family they said you know, they mistreated you, or maybe they didn't give you any affirmation when you were growing up. Uh, maybe it wasn't anything that they did, but it was something that they didn't do. They didn't affirm their love to you. They didn't, uh, you know, lift you up. They just did nothing. There's different ways of being rejected. Maybe it was a group of friends. Maybe it was a certain uh, romantic uh, encounter or affair or person uh, that you wanted to have a relationship with. And they rejected you. And it has affected everything that you touch your hand to now. Every time you go to a job, it's always something that is going to affect your perception of life. You've been rejected before and there's a spirit that's going to be broken tonight. Can I get an amen? Amen. I want fruit in your life and fruit that remains. Amos 9, I'm going to close here, verse 13 to 14. Yes, indeed, it won't be long now. This is the message translation. It's a little creative in the words. This is God's decree, he says. There are uh, going to happen things so fast that your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of another, you won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening all at once and everywhere you look. Blessings. Some of us are unaware of God's future involvement in our life personally. He wants to bless you. That's his plan for your life. He's not interested in punishing you. He wants to accommodate you. He wants to uh, pour out blessing in your life. And it's pictured here like the pouring of wine upon the mountaintops and upon the hills. I'll make everything right again for my people in Israel. They'll rebuild the ruined cities. 
They'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. They'll work in their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. And I will plant them. I will plant them again in their own land. They'll never again be uprooted from the land I've given them. God, your God, says so. Amen. Faith on our part releases the blessing of heaven. And we always disciple our men and women by teaching them it's not so important who you are today, but who you will become in the future. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. And God is <clears throat> trying to convince you to be forward focused, to be thinking about the future. It's not something that's going on right now in your life. It's all about your future, planning for the days. The days are coming. Are you ready to secure your future? Amen. Don't be surprised what God is about to do. Maybe, uh, lastly, you've been complaining. You had words that were hey, God's not doing this. God's not doing that. This can only keep you back. This can only be a hindrance to you. I want you to position yourself like uh, Willie Mays. He said he had his glove. He had two different kind of catches, Willie May. Before that, there was this kind of catch, or this kind of catch, I think it was. Yeah, this is the one traditionally that the baseball outfielder would catch with his glove up like this. But Willie Mays had a different style. He had the basket catch. Are you ready to catch your blessing tonight? Yes. He put his glove out like this. He made it famous. And are you ready to catch God's blessing for you tonight? Amen. Proverbs eleven twenty four. 24. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. There is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. God wants to pour out material blessings in your life. I am not a uh, blab it and grab it preacher, but I'm here tonight. Amen. God is going to help you. We're going to pray, and we're going to believe God to bring poverty and give wisdom mm -hmm. in stewardship, tithe, revelation tonight. Secondly, uh, I want people to come up here at the end of the service. You're looking for a supernatural breakthrough in relationships. Amen. Everything you do doesn't work. And that's because, amen, God wants to get involved in your life. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and our hearts before the Lord. I'd like to give an, first an altar call for those this evening, who might not be saved, you might not be Christian, you have uh, you know, never been born again before, you've never realized that Jesus has died for your sins on the cross, and that he shed his blood for you, the Bible says that all those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. There's not one person that is eliminated from this opportunity. Amen. You've been brought here by the Holy Spirit. God wants to save you. He wants to give you uh, a freedom from sin. He wants to plan miracles for your life. And the first miracle that God has planned for you is to be saved. And you'd like to get saved tonight. And if you want to get saved and you want to pray with us, I want you to lift up your hand as a sign before God that that's you. You want to give your life to Jesus. You lifted your hand. Praise God. If there's anybody else here, I believe you meant it, man. And God's going to help you tonight. And no one's looking around. No one's uh, walking about except the musicians. And you tonight, maybe you were saved a long time ago. But you have wandered away from the truth. You have decided to backslide. That means you're out of fellowship. You're out of relationship with God. And that's you tonight. You're not saved. Or you're backslidden. Praise God. Maybe that's you tonight. You've tried a lot of things. You've tried a lot of drugs. You've, maybe you have a problem with alcohol or immorality. Uh, certain ways of thinking are keeping you back from the good life, the, the life that God has planned. And that's you today. Amen. You're backslidden. So I have two calls. You're not saved. You're backslidden. Somebody lifted their hand. Amen. And, and that was a sign to us that you wanted to pray. That was you. You want to pray? Okay, when you come forward, I'd like to pray with you. Our sister's going to sing a song here. If you're not saved, there's still time to come forward. We'd like to pray with you so you can get your relationship right with God. Amen. Praise God. I appreciate your victory. Let's pray a prayer. Say, Jesus, I thank you for salvation.
to do everything and I want you to be happy take my life take my family take my little boy take everything that we have and bring blessing thank you for this prayer and we give you our lives we give you our faith in Jesus name God touch this precious family Dominion, favor, and blessing, God. Release it into their lives, my God. Oh, little Shikarabande. for coming forward to pray. Amen. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing a testimony from you one day. Praise God. Look what God did. Amen. You've been brought here tonight. We're going to take a few more minutes. If you want a breakthrough in your life, amen, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, I want you to come forward. We're going to pray for a miracle in your life. Amen. Whether it's, uh, we're going to break a spirit of poverty. Maybe you need a job. You want um, uh, in, in a job raise or better hours, a better position, or perhaps you have a, a problem with a habit, maybe. There's a, a drug habit or an alcohol habit, amen, maybe uh, you have some kind of habit that you want broken in your life. We're going to take a few moments here to pray for you, for the success of your life, and what was the last one? The last one, we're going to break that immo immorality, break that spirit. Lift your hands right now, folks. And say this prayer with me. Close your eyes. Say, Jesus, I claim dominion. And devil, you cannot remain in my heart. I cast out poverty. I cast out immorality. I cast out small-mindedness. And I believe you. By the blood. By the name of Jesus. That this night, I am released. From every, from every curse and every bondage, and every bondage. in Jesus' name. In Let's Jesus pray, church. Name. God, touch it. Every and bless it. Every Lord. Every God, release uh, favor and break poverty. Break poverty. Break poverty. Break break blessing, Lord God. Release uh, favor. Break poverty. Break immorality right now. Break every lie. Break the spirit of rejection right now, God. We release these into favor and dominion, God. Touch and bring forward into their future, God, a destiny, God. Promises in Jesus' name. Jobs to the unemployed. Uh, dominion. Break poverty. Break small-mindedness. And break unbelief right now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship God. Sick 
For thus says the Lord your God tonight, Is anything too great for me or too absurd that I cannot control? Thus says the Lord your God tonight, Nothing is too small for me. Nothing is under the wire. But I am here to give you what you need. And I will break the powers of hell. And I will release you under blessing. The wine uh, will flow in your life. The dripping, the anointing, and the power and the blessing. No longer are you a son of sin. No longer are you a daughter of immorality or of a brokenness and rejection. But I have accepted you in the beloved. And my plans for you are good. And I have a, a good a record for you. I have a, a great future of blessing. This is my will for you. Receive it. Accept it. I will overtake. I will grab hold of you. Only if you allow me. Don't look for other things to fix your problem. Yes. I am your solution. Yes. I am your God. Thus says the Lord tonight. Let's praise Him. Hallelujah. God, you are the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes into the Father but through you, God. You are the altar and the God, you hold our lives in your hand. Your care for us is enormous. It is unbelievable. We're so grateful that you're here with us. We thank you tonight for those that were praying for salvation, those who dedicated themselves to you, Lord. I pray, God, keep them in your care, your protection, your covering, Lord God. And those that prayed for breakthrough, Lord God, your blood is well empowering them, Lord God. Give them help. Move in their behalf, God, and bless them. And bring us back safely on Wednesday night. We're asking in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing a testimony from you about what God has created in your life. Amen. God bless you. We'll be back on Wednesday night.